emotional after that <laughs> inspiring talk. Um, well, thank you, and it's such an honor to be here, um, and uh, I feel really uh, blessed to be kind of part of this conversation, and it's really exciting, actually, that my siblings are also in the audience, so thank you, because um, usually I'm presenting in the States, and they don't have an opportunity to hear me, so let me start. All right, so... All right, so I wanted to start or lead with the kind of founding premise of the Legatum uh, Center for Entrepreneurship um, at MIT. And that is that entrepreneurs and their market-driven solutions are critical to global prosperity. What I mean by that is we need to, we need to make 500 million jobs, new jobs, in the next two decades in order to provide for the growing global workforce. And, and actually, this, this chart on the, on the right here quite uh, clearly shows that entrepreneurs are going to be the ones who create these jobs. So you can see the dark blue representing net job growth um, that's coming from new firms, new and young firms, and in the light blue, um, established firms. And you can see that this job growth is going to be coming from new firms. And actually, high growth, innovation-driven firms don't just create jobs within their organization, they create jobs in the community. Um, and, uh, and that is clearly shown by uh, Moretti's work that shows for every one innovation-driven job that you create. Um, very elegant of me. <laughs> so for every one innovation-driven um, uh, job that's created, you have five created in the local ecosystem. Now, this conversation is not just about jobs, it's about prosperity. It's about creating and driving social and economic progress. It's about creating good jobs, safe jobs, empowering jobs. And so here's my bold statement of the day. We have the potential to change the world through entrepreneurship and to overcome some of our world's greatest challenges, but we need entrepreneurial leaders with a special set of characteristics. And that's what I want to spend the next couple of minutes focused on, is to celebrate some of the incredible female entrepreneurs that I've been working with across the world who are not just using entrepreneurship to create jobs, they're using entrepreneurship to create good jobs and to drive social progress. So, let me introduce you to Lindsay. Lindsay is the co-founder of a company called Sanergy. They're based in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Now, Lindsay has created a business where social good is core to their business model and value proposition. It's not an afterthought. It's not corporate social responsibility. It is core. She's using entrepreneurship to drive change. What I mean by that is she's using her business model. She's developed a business model to overcome and help the 2.5 billion people on this planet who don't have access to a toilet. That's a third of the world's population who don't have access to a toilet. Now, what she's done is she's created a, a non-profit which, which creates and builds toilets um, and sells them at cost to entrepreneurs who, lives in, who live in the slums of Kibera in Nairobi. Now, she's also created a for-profit enterprise who purchases the waste from those non-profit entrepreneurs who are running those toilets as businesses in the slums. They then process the waste and, 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 and transform that waste into profitable um, goods, which they then sell, and then the profits then go back into the business to provide more toilets. This is a scalable, sustainable way to tackle the sanitation crisis in Nairobi, and hopefully over time, it will be able to scale across the world. They have 53,000 daily users today. That's women who are safe at night because they don't have to walk several miles to use the toilet. There's girls who are going back to school because they are able to have um, private facilities to go to the bathroom at school. They're also cleaning up the streets of Nairobi by processing thousands of metric tons of waste a year. They've created thousands of jobs. This actually is pre-maternity leave, so the statistics are actually um, uh, even more impressive than what I have here. They've created 800 to 1,000 jobs of micro-entrepreneurs who, uh, who are using these um, micro-businesses, running these toilets as businesses, and they've also created 250 local jobs um, high impact jobs through through their business and the economics work it costs um, our country spends about forty five dollars per person per year to provide sanitation facilities for all of us the Kenyan government can't afford that but they can afford four dollars per person per year which is what this business model represents now let me introduce you to Ella Ella Pinovich is the founder, a co-founder, along with two of her other female co-founders who have set up a business that's focused on ethical supply chains. For the consumer, you and I, see this beautiful 
um, jewelry. Actually, I'm wearing some today. Um, and uh, but on the back end, what they have is 2,000 artisans around Nairobi who are all connected through mobile phone to designers in Silicon Valley, who have access to international markets through their platform, who have access to designs that consumers around the world want to buy. And more than that, Soko shares 30% of the revenue of the jewelry of a $100 bracelet with the artisans in Nairobi. That's revenue, not profit. And what's even more impressive is that Ella has consciously consciously built a business around the people that she's serving. She recognized when she first launched this business five years ago that actually there are many, that most of the artisans of the 2,000 artisans she's been working with were male. Why was that? Because there were plenty of trained and talented artisans who could work with brass around Nairobi, and particularly in Kibera where she's based. And what she realized is that actually these women weren't able to buy the precision tooling machines and equipment to create this jewelry. They also didn't have the necessary training to work with the precision tooling to create the beautiful handcrafted jewelry that, that Soko wanted to put on the international market. So what did she do? She, she set up an asset financing program for these women. She set up training programs for these women. And now she has empowered hundreds of women artisans around the city who are not only prov making art, um, jewelry through and selling it through Soko's platform, but also in the local market. Um, this is a lady, Veronica, who I met when I was in Kibera, um, and she literally told me, Soko saved my life. Before Soko, I barely had enough to eat, and now with Soko, I have started my own business, even hired my first employees, and can provide for my family without fear. She moved from the slums of Nairobi into the city of Nairobi, and this is an example of path moving, uh, creating pathways from uh, poverty to prosperity. Finally, I wanted to introduce you to Alicia. Now, often when we talk about women in tech and women in entrepreneurship, it's because we want to create solutions that make sense for women, and often women um, were able to come up with those solutions. And actually, Alicia and her company, Blumatech, is a perfect example of this. One in three women die from a heart attack. Uh, in, in terms of deaths, one in three deaths of women are um, as a result of a heart attack. It's the number one killer for women in the world. And one of the reasons this is is because the data that we have to help women deal, and uh, deal with heart, um, heart disease doesn't exist because we're not collecting data from women. We're able to collect data much more easily from men because the devices can sit right here for women, you need something a little bit more complicated and technical. So Alicia has committed the last five years of her life to building a device that can be inserted into a bra and collect data that can improve women's health. And over the last year, she's been able to um, start a company, build the product, and it's very close to hitting the market and changing the lives of millions of women around the world. Now, obviously, these examples are just a few of the, the startups and the, the, the incredible women that I'm working with um, at MIT. And so I want to ask the question, um, I wanted to share just a couple of statistics because, you know, these women, um, so, you know, we've got dozens of women through the Legatum Center and, you know, in the States, and I apologize for sharing US statistics, it's because that's where I've been based for the last um, several years. You've got 11.6 6 million firms owned by women in the US. They've created 9 million jobs and $1.7 trillion um, dollars in, in, um, in helping the, uh, the economy. The challenge is, though, that this only provides 8% of employment and 4.2% of revenue. So is the glass half full or, or half empty. Um, now, yes, VCs um, are operating in the past. $85 billion of VC funding was spent last year and only 2.2% went to all female teams. 15% of, of US dollars went to um, teams with a, co a female co-founder. Only 9% of decision makers um, in the VC world are women. And 74% of US-based VCs have zero. US investors. Now, women participation at senior levels is 18%, only 8% of representation in C-suites, and 1% of boardrooms um, have a, women, a woman in included. However, you, know, you hear the stories of Alicia and Ella 
and you think, huh, something's happening. From the bottom up, some of these women are overcoming these barriers and are able to create huge amounts of change through their purpose-driven ventures. $20 trillion of consumer spending is women-controlled on this planet. $20 trillion, and actually 80% um, they women make 80% of buying decisions globally. Now, that's an opportunity for women. Um, first Round Capital um, released some incredible data just last year that showed that companies with female founders outperformed companies with all male teams by 63%. We're waking up to the fact that women can have a huge amount of impact through their uh, innovation-driven enterprises and there's an incredible ecosystem of female-driven a cattle ecosystem out there that are supporting and driving and helping um, these women succeed from WISE to First Round Capital's um, project Value for Women, which is based here in London, All Raise, dedicated to diversity and funders and founders, Project Entrepreneur, which is an accelerator dedicated to helping women. And then, we, uh, and then there's Include, which focuses on organizations um, and helping organizations develop the tools to be more gender forward, and from recruitment to maternity policy. And then, of course, there's us. We can be role models to our female colleagues and help um, drive that individual change that can really uh, make a difference. So I'm going to end there. This is my beautiful daughter and my seven-month-old son. <laughs> Probably see the bags under my eyes. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, I really look forward to an exciting conversation after the panel.